Okay, let's take a look at a few ways we can start to build endurance using the rope. While I mess about on the beach. I know that some of you who have watched my videos have come for the rope flow bits and pieces that I did a while back. Others are more interested in generally building mobility and endurance and movement capacity. Turns out there's some crossover between all of the above. So today we're going to look at specifically how we can use the rope as a tool to support our endurance or incorporate it into your existing endurance or cardio practice. And at the end I'll kind of round things up and give my personal preference and how I use it. So option one, let's not overcomplicate things if we don't have to, it's just to go with the flow. So it's the most simple and intuitive way to build endurance using the rope is just through unstructured casual play. There's no need for set time limits or hit in a certain pace or heart rate if you don't want to. You can get a lot of benefits from just picking up the rope, having a mess about and just building kind of organically. So this is the way to go particularly if you're just starting, you're learning this new skill, just picking it up and going for a few minutes at a time. Um, that's what I used in rebuilding my body while I was recovering from long COVID and chronic pain and fatigue. I would just pick the rope up now and again. I didn't put pressure on myself to have to go for a certain time frame uh, or a certain pace. And as my body and my mind and nervous system started to recover and my capacity improved, I just naturally started to go for a bit longer um, and a bit more intense. That's not me saying rope flow cured my long COVID. There was many other things that I did which I'd like to get into at another point, but yeah, it was definitely part of the process. So you can gradually then increase the length and the intensity and pace as you see fit. If you want to kind of give a name to this sort of training, it's kind of synonymous with the Swedish fartlek training, which is a Swedish word for speed play, it's GCSE, P. So there's not a constant pace or intensity, you just mix things up as you see fit. It kind of mimics how you would perform in a lot of team sports like football or rugby. So nice and simple, you just get out there, mix things up, be creative, and you'll get a lot of the benefits without having to worry about any specific training zones or anything like that. But those things could be potentially useful, and that's what we'll touch on coming up soon. Rope flow can also work well as a warm-up tool prior to your other sort of endurance-based activities, particularly running. I also use it prior to strength training, particularly if I've got more of like a upper body focus session or I'm doing a lot of rotating. I mix it in with clubs and maces and bands and other tools just to keep my warm-up interesting and fun. So it's a great way to just get the body moving, get the heart rate and the body temperature up, and mobilize most of the joints in the body. So you get in the wrists, the elbows, shoulders, spine, hips, neck, ankles even. And if you're a runner specifically, rope flow helps you mimic some of the movements that are involved in the running gait. So you're coiling through the core, you're practicing getting your head over the, the standing foot or the planted foot. So it's somewhat specific to the skill that you're about to perform, which is, which is ideal. Then aside from the warm up, it can be a nice tool to incorporate in a cool down if you do a cool down, particularly after like a, an intense, like pacey run, help to kind of kickstart that recovery process and down regulation to get the body and mind to start to wind down and just chill out basically. Option three, this is where we start getting a bit more specific. So I've talked about zone two, low intensity, steady state training on here before uh, a while back. So rope flow can be a useful way to get that kind of thing done, uh, particularly as I said before, if you're not a big fan of running or other forms of cardio, there's still plenty of potential benefits of doing that lower intensity work, both for our general well-being and as a base to kind of build upon for our performance too. So if you go in this route, you're aiming for a comfortable pace at which you can kind of maintain a, a conversation, easy sort of 
nasal in and out breathing. If you have a heart rate monitor, you're typically looking at around 180 beats per minute minus your age, give or take. Uh, there's other videos and links in the description for all that. So your sessions are generally going to be continuous, minimum of sort of 20 minutes build into to 30 to 60 minutes or more if you're if you're mad. So you're keeping the intensity low and over time the idea is that this will help you build your aerobic base which is then the foundation for more intense performance uh, and just supporting your general health like I said and building work capacity. Option four, we have our high intensity interval training or HIT for short, which is increasingly popular on the socials and uh, in training programs. So we're basically going for high intensity bouts of a certain time period followed by a rest period and repeated for a certain time frame or a certain number of rounds. This can look quite different so you can have at the one end of the spectrum really intense short rounds like the Tabata protocol which is 20 seconds on 10 seconds off eight rounds and it's like all-out effort absolutely disgusting or you could go for longer work periods like four minutes on a minute off for you know three four five rounds rope flow seems to work a bit better with the latter like longer working periods it can be harder to get your heart rate up to the that real high intensity with kind of a, a quite a light rope can work if you're using a heavier rope with a big knot on the end like this one. So I made this bad boy a while back and it adds a little bit of extra resistance. I found it really helpful in learning some of the the mace bell exercises as well as a useful training tool for that. It's my opinion and that of coaches who are more experienced and smarter than me that HIT is a tool that can be useful but should probably be used sparingly for most people. And if it's used, it should be built on top of an already established base of endurance and strength and mobility. An 80-20 split is the ratio that's often kind of thrown around 80% of lower intensity training with 20% of higher intensity training. But I think this really varies depending on your experience levels and your personal goals and health status and all that. So I used high intensity interval training a lot from a fairly young age, like in my teens, um, often without any regard for my recovery or health. I just wanted to push myself as hard as I could, go hard or go home. So my concern is that for most people it's too much too soon without establishing a strong healthy foundation. It can be a recipe for injury and burnout if you're just layering it on top of existing stress and like not having the foundation there. So my preference for building endurance, uh, particularly as it pertains to rope flow, is to kind of use the first three methods that I mentioned. So more casual play, incorporating the rope with my warm-up and cool down now and again, and then sometimes doing a a longer sort of zone two style session, uh, particularly if I'm not feeling a run or like getting on the bike for hours. You could by all means experiment with the hit stuff if it aligns with your goals and your sport and you've already kind of built a bit of a base. But I personally feel that there are better tools for the job to do that, like sprinting, sled work, pushing and pulling, um, the asshole bike, rower, punch bag, and stuff that's more specific to your actual sport if you do it. I'm back at jiu-jitsu training, I get plenty of high heart rate work by getting my butt kicks all over the mat, so I don't really mess around with hip stuff that much anymore. It's not from a place of fear that, oh it's gonna mess me up, but it's just looking at the overall balance of my training and my goals just doesn't really fit in. Uh, I don't really feel the need to do it at this moment in time. So there we go. That's my summary of using a tool like the rope to support your endurance. So whether you prefer kind of the spontaneous play style, you maybe you want to just use it as part of your warm up, or you want to just do the zone two low intensity aerobic stuff, or maybe challenge yourself with the hit stuff now and again. 
the rope is there. You can use it as you wish. Um, yeah, hope this was somewhat helpful. Uh, I've got some more videos coming up on rope flow uh, and mobility and my rebuild series. So documenting my recovery from long COVID, chronic pain, all that. Sh and I've also got a program coming out on my app where we're gonna have some follow along rope stuff that some people have asked me to do and I'm yeah finally getting around to do it finally feeling healthy enough to do it which is is nice let me know if you've got any questions or comments down in the comment section that's what it's for and uh yeah have a healthy heroic day take care and I will catch you soon thank you